Hey, good morning, everyone. It's October the 2nd, 2020, and this is a morning word, and the morning word is caves. We'll get to that in just a second. Shout out to all of our first responders, military personnel, firefighters, police officers, and even I'll go uh, this morning with the school teachers. Thank y'all for what you're doing. Don't be afraid. Grab you the Grab your word, your faith, and get out there and teach our kids. God knows they need some teaching. Also, in case you didn't know it, the president and Melania Trump, Trump have tested positive for the COVID. So uh, COVID-19. So keep them in your prayers this morning. Thank you all for doing so. Now, uh, the morning word is caves. We're going to be in John chapter 14. We're going to read just a few verses here, <clears throat> beginning with verse 16. Are you ready? And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. When I was in uh, high school, about the 10th grade, maybe the 11th grade. We had a group, actually it was the 10th grade, I think. We had a group and it's still there called Campus Life. And we had some pretty cool leaders with Campus Life. Now don't get me wrong, we, we all went to church and it's a Christian organization. We all went to church, but we weren't all living for the Lord. But nevertheless, it was a good opportunity. We got some good word and good good companionship and fellowship and some instruction uh, while we were while we were there. Now, I'm telling you this story uh, that's written down on this, on this notepad. This notepad has about 15 devotions on it that I wrote about six or seven years ago. These journals all have devotions in them. I, was, I felt like I was supposed to write a book years ago, and I never got around to writing the book, writing the book so I just, Jesse and Annabeth gave me some journals, so I just started journaling some of these devotions in them, and so now I have a book so instead of publishing the book with all of these things, uh, we're just doing this live. So one of these days, y'all can take all these notes and all these books and all these things. My kids can have them and they can bind them if they want to or have them printed. I'm not going through all that, but I am sharing them with you guys. So the book that I was supposed to write is now the morning word. Going back to my story, um, <clears throat> we, did, uh, we were going to we had a little campus life trip set up for a Saturday morning. They took us up to Oak Mountain somewhere, I think it was, somewhere up in Birmingham area, and we went spelunking. That's a big old fancy word for it. We went exploring a cave. And uh, so we had all of these headlamps and everything, and we go into this cave, and there's all these girls and guys, and there's some good-looking girls in there, and guys and uh, girls that we were sweet on. And so we're partially there for the Christian fellowship. We're partially there for the chicks and we're certainly there for the adventure. We're supposed to be going caving. We knew it. So they said, we're clothes you don't mind getting muddy and wet. And we did that. So we go in this cave and I don't know, God knows who was leading this thing. Could have gotten us all killed. I don't know. But we're up in this cave and we get up in this part of it. And it, it, it we went back a good ways, crawling and going through rock places and places where you had to lay down and hold your head sideways and kind of pull yourself along with your toes and fingers. It was really claustrophobic I was I'm claustrophobic and it was it was a harrowing experience and we went in there and in several places they told us to turn off our lights and to be completely quiet and still now guys I don't know how to explain what what happened I don't know how to explain it. there's no way to explain it but there it was the redefinition of darkness is pitch and utter darkness I'm talking about, I held my hands up in front of my face and touched my forehead and my eyebrows, my fingers right in front of my face. I couldn't tell you that I had a hand even on my body, much less be able to see it. There was, you could hear nothing. You could see nothing. And then couple that with some of the tight places that we got in. And, uh, and, and I wanted to scream, you know, I felt like I'm stuck and I can't go backwards. I can't go forwards and my eyes open and I'm crawling through this rock that's about this wide, you know. I mean, I don't know what in the Sam Hill I was doing other than just up there for girls and fellowship, but you do some stupid stuff. That's my point. You do some stupid stuff sometime so that people, uh, you can be, be with people. And the, the, the fear that came in, in my, 
heart for and in my mind for a few minutes was it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. The only reason it just didn't cause me to completely panic was because I knew we're getting ready to turn the lights back on and because I knew that I wasn't up by myself, even though in those moments of complete darkness when we turn off, I felt like I was by myself, which is the point that I want to make. Jesus told his disciples here, he said, I'm going away. He said, but I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will come to you. And he goes on to tell us, and he says here, he said, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit who will abide with you. That means to live with you, to reside with you, to abide in you forever, forever. I mean, forever doesn't have an end to it. And so there are, there are people <clears throat> today all over the world that are having those feelings right now and that sense and a very real fear that I had in that cave. And just like I wouldn't tell anybody around me what I was feeling because I didn't want people to think I was a sissy or, uh, or uh, afraid, especially around the girls. I just kept it to myself. And a lot of times right now today in the world, there are Christian people who have this fear of being alone of being in tight, a tight place alone, of being in isolation alone. And it's overwhelming them, but they won't tell anyone because they don't want anyone to think that, you know, I'm supposed to be a Christian. I'm not supposed to be afraid of being alone. And yet I, it's, it's a crushing feeling to feel like you're going through life alone, to feel like you're raising kids alone, to feel like you're going through cancer alone, to feel like you're just getting old alone, to feel like you're gonna die alone or that you, no one understands you so that you are alone with your own feelings. So those are very real things and people fear that. Matter of fact, when you do surveys, you can Google this and on the surveys of the top 10 fears of people, aloneness is usually in the top five, being alone and especially living alone and dying alone. People just fear that. And so it's an overwhelming sense of fear and, and we, that, just uh, just comes upon people and, and some, maybe I'm talking to this morning on a daily basis, you know, and, and you're, you're wondering, you know, what, what am I going to do? Uh, and I want to encourage you with this word this morning. I want to encourage all of us and remind us that I don't, if you are a born again Christian, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not alone ever in your life. It doesn't matter if you if you're like me when they turned out the light in that in that uh, cave. It doesn't matter if you can't see anything or sense anything. Just as sure as those people were around me in that cave, and yet I had a feeling like I was the only one in the world. Just like those people were there, Jesus is there with you. Just as sure as I knew that I don't need to get up and uh, uh, and scream, well, I couldn't stand up. I, just as sure as I knew that I don't need to scream right now because we're going to turn the lights on in a minute and I'll be able to see, you need to know that there is a light with you in the darkness and there is a light at the end of the tunnel that you're in. And just as sure as I knew in those tight places that in just a moment we're going to be at a place where I can stand up it's not going to be tight forever and that there's people in front of me in this cave that are already standing in an open space. They've already been where I am right here. I know that I'm going to, in just a minute, I'm going to be in a place where I can stand up. So all of these things have a spiritual connotation to them. You may be in a dark, tight in a place in your life. Maybe it's been going on for years, months, weeks, days. I don't know. But I'm telling you that where you are right now, people have already been. And that the tide is not going to stay forever. You're going to get in an open space and be able to stand up. And that the darkness that is overwhelming you has dulled your senses to the point that you don't think, you can't see or feel that anyone cares, that anyone is with you. But I want you to know that Jesus is with you. And if Jesus is with you, that's all that matters, and that's all who matters. Now, here's the deal. Jesus can be with us in a way that no one else can. 
You know why? Because Jesus knows what it's like to be alone. Jesus knows what it's like to be alone. He was alone in his family, even though he had a family. Think about this. Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, Joseph was not his real father. He was his basically adoptive father, earthly father. That his brothers and th sisters thought he had a demon. They never, they thought, they said, our, you know, my, our older brother, he's a nutcase. He's a lunatic. They'd have carried him off today and had him, uh, ha had him hospitalized if, it, if we'd been living in this day and time. They thought, he was a, they thought he was a heretic. That his closest friends, his closest friends abandoned him at the time of his greatest need. They left him. That he felt so alone on the cross that he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? Why have you left me here alone? So you see that that feeling that you have right now is just a feeling. But for Jesus, it was a reality. Uh, it's a, you, you just feel you are alone, but you're not alone. He is with you. He is with you, and he wants to reassure you with these scriptures that he is with you. You may not be able to see it. You may not be able to hear it. You may not be able to feel it, but we don't live by our feelings and our senses. We live by faith. And Jesus said, I don't want you, I don't care what you are facing in your life. I don't care what you're going through in your life. Divorce, single parenting, never been married, um, you know, alone with your own thoughts, living alone, uh, black sheep of the family, disinherited. I want you to know, according to God's word, that Jesus gave his word. He said, I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you an orphan. I will come to you in the Holy Spirit. I will send my helper to you. That's what he said. I will give you another helper and he will abide with you forever, forever, forever. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, Jesus is with you. There's light at the end of the tunnel. The tight places are not gonna last forever. There's light that we're coming out of this cave. We're coming out of this tunnel. And while you're there, don't panic. Don't panic. Don't do stupid stuff. Don't, don't go make decisions to try to rid yourself of the feelings of aloneness and abandonment and all of those things. Don't go do stupid stuff. Don't marry a clawed head just so you don't have to go home alone. Get you a dog. I'll find you a dog. Don't, don't, don't go to and get you some wisdom from some clawed headed worldly people because you don't feel like God's hearing your prayers. God hears your prayers. Be patient. Know that you have a guide in the darkness. Know that the one who was truly alone has now come to you so that you will never be alone. The one who was truly abandoned, Jesus, has come to us that we would never be abandoned. The one who was left alone by his friends has come alongside and said that there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. And I don't know what, what you and I uh, may face today, what we may face tomorrow, or what we're going to face for the rest of our life until Jesus comes back. But here's what I know. We will not face it alone. Jesus is with us. And other people may not understand what you're going through. You say, Pastor Randy, don't understand. And I may not, but I know Jesus understands. We have a high priest who cannot be touched by our weaknesses, but was in all things tempted and tried and tested as we are. Jesus knows. Jesus knows you can't put a feeling on him. You can't put an emotion on him. You can't put an experience on him that he hasn't lived through or died with and rose again. Everything, all the darkness and all the tight places in your life and all the aloneness was put on Jesus at the cross. He's already taken all of that and he died with it. He drug it to hell, threw it in Satan's face and rose again. He's triumphed over your tight places, your caves. He has triumphed over your darkness. He has triumphed over your aloneness. He has triumphed over every fear that you could possibly have. And he says, fear not. 
I'm with you. I will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. So guys, listen, you're not alone. Uh, the cave that you're in and you feel like you're alone in, you're not alone. Jesus is in that cave with you and it's just gonna be a little while and you're coming out. Until then, he's with you. So don't be afraid. Thank you guys for tuning in this morning. It's Friday. We'll see you guys um, Monday. Good Lord willing and the saints don't rise. Peace out.